everybody. Hello. I'm Brian Kelson with you again with a little update and I thought it might be wise to post some helpful links. A few people contact me and say where can I find this and so forth and so on. Well as you can see I'm trying a new video uh, recording or editing software. Um, my technical expertise has enabled me to at least find one uh, through uh, the search feature of your favorite web browser and um, I'm looking at uh, the quality here and the uh, user friendliness of an NCH product. Now I'm currently doing a series Romans through Philemon and I'm hoping that the scriptures are speaking very, very clearly and very loudly uh, that the mid-exposition of Romans through Philemon is dispensationally unsound. Uh, I have even used stronger terms in the matter and saying that it is a confusion and it is also a destruction of the principles of right division. Uh, I've understood the mid-exposition, most of it, uh, for many, many years. I've met many mid ex brethren uh, who, uh, one recently, as I mentioned, didn't want to confuse me with the facts and uh, were, was even prepared to admit that Acts 28 was when Israel was set aside. But, uh, you know, let's, let's face the issue that during the Acts period, Paul was gradually getting the truths of Ephesians and Colossians. Uh, this is totally untrue and unsupported by Scripture. Uh, what we find in Paul's Acts period letters uh, is an incredible dispensational framework that fits entirely with promise and prophecy. None other things than Moses, the prophets, and the, uh, indeed the law said was going to happen. The big trap for them, of course, is to discover justification by faith and then totally ignore the fact uh, that what was proclaimed in the law uh, demonstrated indeed uh, in the life of Abraham and David. Uh, we're also now uh, discovering the great parallels between Paul and Hebrews. Uh, the exercise is not designed uh, to show that Paul wrote Hebrews. Uh, quite the contrary, uh, that can be a discussion, argument amongst friendly people. Uh, and the main issue for me, of course, is not uh, who wrote Hebrews, but the fact that it's dispensationally aligned with and perfectly in harmony with Paul's Acts period letters. And that is a vain attempt uh, to say Romans through Philemon and leave Hebrews out of the list because Paul didn't write it, when in fact Hebrews and Romans, 1 and 2 Thessalonians, 1 and 2 Corinthians, Galatians, are entirely on the same dispensational page. So uh, we will continue that uh, very shortly. Um, we're going to go and look at the prophet Hosea and uh, Romans, Hebrews and Peter. And we'll find some fascinating uh, parallels there. Uh, why am I doing this? Well, I, uh, for 30 years I was um, involved in an X28 group in Australia. Uh, I helped design their newsletter uh, I opened some Bible studies uh, on the eastern seaboard of Australia. Uh, I was probably uh, one of the principal speakers at every annual conference. Uh, I've been invited to speak in New Zealand, the Philippines, uh, but um, my uh, public uh, exposure now has uh, diminished and dwindled to uh, a few email lessons that I send out and uh, to uh, the videos up here on YouTube and maybe when I get time on Vimeo and um, Odyssey, uh, which uh, is one worth looking at. So first up, I'd like to introduce you to my uh, website, um, x28.net. Now, not an extensive website, but certainly a very beneficial website for those of you who wish to uh, proclaim a right division and the truths of the mystery, the dispensation of the grace of God, there are some wonderful resources there. Uh, now, I don't mean resources for personal Bible study. I mean resources 
uh, to use as introductory material. Uh, so without further ado, here is a, a view of my website, hacks28.net. You can find this website, hacks28.net, uh, very simply. And across the here, you'll have the home page. And this is the tracked page. Very, very beneficial. Um, how to subscribe to my email lessons right here. Uh, books, uh, a great list of um, very valuable uh, resource materials there. Uh, this uh, link to charts is incredibly helpful. Uh, I'll look at it in a minute. Um, audios, don't know whether I have too many up there. And the videos, most of them are on YouTube. The blog is absolutely inactive. I don't encourage uh, discourse. Um, the frequently asked questions, haven't got much in there. But certainly the links page we shall look at as we go along. Now, as you can see, um, why Paul, X28, the rapture, don't get caught up. Um, X28 is the answer, a few testimonies uh, from friends over the years. And then um, more very, very helpful articles, uh, particularly uh, in a um, introductory uh, sense. I believe that uh, I am basically an evangelist to right division and the great New Testament uh, dispensational divide, namely Acts 28. Now down the bottom here, uh, you're going to find some very helpful, um, right here, are recent email lessons. And I think you will, um, I think you will appreciate just um, how helpful they can be if you've lost track uh, and you're on the mailing list and you've lost track of a, a recent email, you'll find them posted down here. Eventually, the email session, series rather, uh, will be compiled into one PDF and put on the tracks page. So that's my home page. Now I'm going to go over to tracts. <clears throat> now the tracks page, which is taking a while to load, as you can see, um, I've got some very colourful pictures in here. Um, the, um, this one here is um, an Acts 28 tract. Look, very, very handy to, ha uh, to hand out. Um, print it. Put your own uh, contact information uh, there if you want. Although I'd be very careful uh, publicising your home address. Don't do that. Uh, you'll have um, weirdos banging on your door. Um, this is um, the Acts 28 track here, the second one. It's in a booklet form. Uh, and then basically I go on to um, various uh, ad hoc topics uh, that you might come across, uh, particularly in your exchanges with the Mid-Acts brethren. Uh, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together has nothing to do with going to church on Saturday or Sunday. Um, wrath to the uttermost, well, that's uh, one of those... Thessalonian passages that the mid acts people like to use to show that um, Israel were done with. Um, that's a refutation of that particular uh, point of view. Uh, Christians' possession in Christ here. Um, the two churches, um, the church of the firstborn, the church which is his body. Um, an article on tithing. Um, I'm pretty appalled uh, at the commercialism in modern Christian uh, churches. Um, and the whoopee do froth and bubble approach that many apply. Uh, from what I've seen uh, in the mainstream, the big mega churches, that is, very little um, solar scriptura uh, it can be found. Uh, the mystery of um, Ephesians and Colossians. Uh, what happened to Israel? Uh, a discourse on uh, their lower me um, setting aside at Acts 28. Bible study rules uh, given perhaps to uh, your Christian friend that knows very little about right division. Uh, the mystery of Romans 16 is not the mystery of Ephesians. That's a biggie. Um, so uh, that's, uh, that you'll find that helpful. What is a Christian? That's a tract by Mr. Stuart Allen. Um, Acts 2 is not the birthday of the church. Another handy one here that you might like to hand out to uh, friends and family who uh, uh, are following the traditional uh, Christ came to start the church point of view. Um, we are not New Covenant Christians today. That's a, that's a very, very important one right there. Um, 
the New Covenant Christians, uh, no such thing. Uh, we are members of the church, which is his body, which has nothing to do with covenants at all. Uh, the Great Commission, as you know, mainstream churches are trying to fulfill the Great Commission, uh, when in fact, if we look carefully at the New Testament records, um, the uh, disciples to whom that commission was given didn't practice it. Um, and uh, so who's wrong? The disciples that got the commission or the church which doesn't understand right division? This series here with um, the little cheetah cub in the picture in the grass there, I took that in Mishawali in Ecuador. Romans is Zion. It's absolutely um, um, an introductory um, presentation of how many times Zion occurs in Paul, either directly or indirectly, in his letter to the Romans. The church which is his body in heavenly places can't be found in Romans at all. Um, Romans is not a foundation epistle to the dispensational truths post-Acts 28 of Ephesians and Colossians. Romans is a doctrinal statement about justification by faith, but its primary um, concern is to demonstrate that Israel are yet God's people, and now the Lord has introduced Gentiles as a provocation. That Peter preached to Gentiles during Acts, wrong. That Paul preached to Gentiles during Acts, that might be one worth looking at. More questions about Acts 10 and 11, um, Peter's vision and his explanation. Water baptism, its dispensational setting. Was Paul first in the body of Christ? Wow, that's a really important one. Paul first in the body of Christ at Acts 9, totally impossible, but um, it's a favourite of the mid-Acts brethren, that's for sure. The dispensational differences in Paul, another explanation as to why his letters fall into two distinct uh, and clearly scripturally supported groups. Uh, plunging headlong into deeper confusion. <laughs> I think I put that in there because I found the graphic. Um, differences in Paul's writings, another, um, another exposition on why Paul must be rightly divided. The Messiah, oh, the Messianic Torah observant believers create confusion. Um, that's an interesting article. Um, one um, that might be uh, rather relevant today when we see this, uh, uh, the Messianic Torah observance having a faster growth than the Pentecostal movement back in the 60s and 70s. Um, Peter, was he a slow learner? You know, <laughs> Paul taught Peter grace. What an absolute fabrication and a nonsense. Um, and I try and expose uh, why that is so. Uh, which body in Romans uh, 16? Uh, that's worth looking at. And this is a blank because I hope to put something else in there very shortly. Here's the links page. And uh, right here, second last up the top, it's a links page. And I will show you uh, two incredible uh, resourceful um, websites here. Uh, Bibleunderstanding.com, um, I think um, I think the um, webmaster still has one or two of my uh, um, articles up there. Very gracious of her. And Charles H. Welsh, um, these are sister sites. Bibleunderstanding.com and charleshwelsh.net, as I understand it, the URL. But you'll find to these two on my website. Um, absolutely essential saved um, web pages. You will be returning and using them frequently. Bibleunderstanding.com and Charles Welsh. Now down here I have um, quite a number of other um, helpful links. The Brian Publishing Trust um, is um, the original Charles Welsh um, group in uh, London and you'll find many of Mr. Welsh's books on there um, but the Berean Publishing Trust. Now the Open Bible Trust is run by Mike Penny and his friends. Um, they, uh, there was a division uh, in the Berean Publishing Trust and um, that's another story for another time and Mike opened the Open Bible Trust. Many uh, books and booklets, very very helpful, can be purchased there. Uh, they ship worldwide. Truth for Today um, was the site um, originated by Oscar Baker out of Indiana in America. Truth for Today. 
very helpful. You can buy some books that uh, you won't find on the bookshelves in your local Christian bookstore. A Berean Truth, the Carolina Bible Group, for those in America, again, they have a Pal Talk room, Pal Talk sessions. If you're lonely, you need some help, uh, log on to the Carolina Bi Bible uh, Group, uh, find out when they have their uh, Pal Talk Bible studies, uh, download Pal Talk to your computer, and jump into the room and have a lot of fellowship and ask a lot of questions. Dispensational Berean, Right Division, these are the appendixes to the Companion Bible right here. Uh, the Berean Bible Fellowship of Australia, uh, where once I was um, uh, very, um, very actively involved. Uh, the Open Bible Fellowship of the Philippines, for those of you in Asia. Asia. Um, the Grace Bible Church of Hampton Road, uh, not too sure about them, but uh, uh, worth having a look at. And uh, Bible Explorations, if it's still going. Now over here, um, we have... Um, formerly Medax, now X28, um, a blog page uh, written by a friend of mine uh, who moved um, out from the Medax position. Acts, uh, from Medax to X28, um, and then um, X28 solves the Medax problems, as those of you who are mixed Medax or were once Medax, um, Medax uh, creates more problems than they solve. Uh, in fact, uh, as you know, Midax creates uh, in-house terminology uh, like the body of Christ, like um, kingdom saints. Uh, kingdom saints is just one of those facades and masks um, and homemade pseudonyms uh, which gives them uh, some uh, unscriptural authority to start talking about the body saints in the Acts period. Be very, very careful when you hear any teacher talking about kingdom saints, uh, because what that means is that they're mid-Acts and they're trying to explain why all the books of Paul in the Acts period had a lot of information in them about the kingdom saints. But there's bits in there about the body saints and um, that's a nonsense. But uh, you'll discover this as you rightly divide the Apostle Paul. I want to return to the home page of x28.net and scroll down to the bottom which I didn't completely show uh, initially and right here is my book very poorly written um, very hard to read it's called The Appearing of Christ Exposing the Traditional Rapture if you click on that you'll find a link where you can either purchase it as a hard copy from Amazon uh, or you can download a free version as a PDF. Uh, now, I think there's 180, 190 odd pages there. Haven't counted it of late. So there's quite a bit of printing, but you can take it to a printing shop if you wish, or just print it on your uh, printer, or just print certain sections of it that you'd like to use and study further. Now, um, in that book are a mass of charts, which I think are very informative, very helpful, and in fact, um, useful um, as teaching aids uh, for uh, self-learning or for sharing with others. Now those tracts, along with some old ones I uh, made years ago, I've put on the um, charts, I meant, I put on the charts page, and I'd like to show you them now, here, under charts. Just for my own record, uh, I copied a whole pile of charts that I produced in Australia uh, back when I was teaching in homes and uh, any other <coughs> uh, avenue or venue that we could find I would hang these big charts up on the curtains with pegs and go through them um, so partly just for a bit of nostalgia I put some of these charts up there which have since uh, I stored in the shed up the back and have been chewed to pieces by the rats and are now no longer existent so I'm so glad I copied a few of them. Now down here, this is a very helpful chart. It shows uh, very simply the dispensational themes either side of Acts 28. Very, very helpful. Now here is a structure of Acts 28. Um, a very, very important structure showing the dispensational differences either side of the announcement of Isaiah 6 by the Apostle Paul at Rome. And then here are the charts uh, that I have used in my book. Uh, this one here, number three, um, 
it's uh, particularly interesting. It shows the rapture in type at Mount Sinai. Uh, there are many, many references in there which are echoed in uh, Corinthians and Thessalonians. Um, it, uh, it's, it's surprising how many, many people who um, are believers and study the New Testament, for the most part, they are rather oblivious uh, about the Old Testament background and the structure. And um, we'll show more about that down there, further down the chart uh, page here. Now here and here, chart one and chart two, this chart here shows Acts 28 simply as a line. And what was expected during the Acts period occurs here. That return of Christ from heaven down through the clouds where some go up to meet him and his feet on the Mount of Olives. Which, of course, is just the reverse of what happened back in the Gospels. He ascended uh, from the Mount of Olives, he went up in the clouds and he disappeared into heaven. Uh, when he comes back to the earth and the earthly purpose, he will appear in heaven, uh, come in the clouds and his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives. Perfectly harmonious. However, we can see by chart number two here that that program was postponed at Acts 28 and here's the dispensation of the grace God as a parenthesis between uh, what was expected in their lifetime back here and what was postponed as we know now for whatever, what is it, <laughs> um, 1960 odd years. Here is what I believe is a theory uh, regarding um, the appearing of Christ. And here uh, we have the Old Testament parallel with the New Testament. And Acts 28 here, the dividing line. In other words, the festive deliverance of Israel out of Egypt to the Promised Land was being fulfilled in the Gospels and the Acts period and was postponed at Acts 28. The parallels are phenomenal. We will not understand Paul and his Acts period letters if we do not understand the festive deliverance of Israel as recorded in the Exodus. Uh, down here uh, we have that petition of Acts 28 again. Here's a uh, the larger version of that Acts 28 chart with Isaiah 6 there breaking uh, the um, separation from God's purpose for the earth through Israel and God's purpose for heavenly places through Christ as head of the church, which is his body. Now that's my charts page. So remember at the bottom of the charts page in the footer of the website is my book, The Appearing of Christ. I believe uh, it's available for free and I, um, whilst blowing my own trumpet, uh, will uh, quite um, uh, assuredly um, convince you that uh, this is worthy of your consideration, uh, if not just for the charts within it. So, so there you have it. Um, I wanted to review my webpage, a little bit of history um, about um, my time in Australia, 30 years nearly, and finally now in America for uh, the last 14 years. <laughs> Uh, and um, in my 30 years of Bible teaching in Australia, uh, there were often times when I had an inkling or a thought crossed my mind that I would perhaps uh, be in America. And I thought, what's the point of me going to America? <laughs> there are, I mean, we have what is uh, referred to as the Bible Belt. Uh, we have plenty of right dividers in America proclaiming the truth. Uh, but after moving here, and finding um, what I believe to be an ability to expose the errors of mid-acts, um, I, I now see uh, why I'm here. And um, I'm appealing to you, um, engage the mid-acts brethren. Uh, they are a compromise between the orthodox and uh, traditional Christian perspective and uh, the correct setting uh, of the dispensation of the grace of God and uh, the church which is his body. Uh, some of them are engaging in uh, what is called Passover or as we commonly refer to it as uh, the Lord's Supper or slash communion because remember uh, that the Lord's Supper is Passover. Um, it's uh, also a feast uh, that looks forward to his parousia, his coming, his presence on the earth 
It's not a thing that we, as members of the church, which is his body, should be engaging in because uh, we're uh, double speaking, so to, so to say. We're um, giving mixed messages. Um, but um, that's up for you to continue. Water baptism, likewise, has nothing to do with us. Um, and um, um, the more we examine right division, uh, if, in, if I can be of help in any way, uh, my website, um, my charts, uh, then um, it, all glory to the Lord in the matter. Uh, because uh, there is no such thing as um, denominational boundaries. There are dispensational boundaries, and that's Acts 28. Uh, and then, uh, and I know this sounds ludicrous, but there should only be one church, and that is the church which is his body. And there simply should be assemblies uh, all around the country and the world for that matter, proclaiming uh, the truths, that is the dispensational truths for today. Uh, con to conclude, please remember that um, there are continuing truths, there are redemptive truths. Uh, Cain and Abel uh, indeed manifest uh, the differences in, in how uh, God has dealt with uh, sin and sins. And it's a wonderful story and has many foundational redemptive truths that can be preached quite readily, quite freely, and quite openly today. Uh, Abraham and justification by faith, a gospel that can be preached today uh, by faith, not by works. Uh, Abraham and his trial of uh, Isaac in Genesis 22. What a wonderful story of the father and the son going both of them together. And as Abraham said to Isaac, God will provide himself a lamb uh, foreordained before the foundation of the world. The Lamb. And they're wonderful truths that can be taught. But uh, for people to walk worthy of the Lord today, uh, we need to expose the Messianic Torah observant for what it is. Uh, we need to make sure that we expose mid-Acts for the compromise it makes. But by dragging uh, Romans through Philemon, uh, they are in fact suggesting to everybody and recycling in their own mind that whatever Paul writes about in the Acts period somehow can be applied today, which is a total uh, falsehood. So anyway, thank you for watching. Um, I took a break from uh, Paul and Hebrews. I wanted to introduce you to my website rather poorly and uh, uh, continue in prayer. Continue, uh, my friends, uh, to call upon the Lord uh, to uh, help many, many mid brethren to see um, the um, anomalies, uh, to see um, the dysfunction of mid uh, to see uh, the uh, errors that mid proclaims, and to see uh, the stri strife, the stress and confusion uh, that a mid X X9, X13, doesn't matter where, uh, creates uh, in the lives of those seeking to know the Lord and to be liberated in the knowledge of Christ as head of the church, which is his body.